Hello, my name is Brian Hines. I'm a senior designer at Obsidian Entertainment. Today we're going to show you a glimpse into the outer worlds, showing you the same thing we showed behind closed doors at E3. Hope you enjoy it. So we're starting off here in the town of Fallbrook. This is on the world of Monarch. Now, Fallbrook is kind of a haven for illicit activity here in the colony. It's definitely not a place that uh, has a lot of law and order going on. The town of Fallbrook is run by a company called Sublight Salvage and Shipping. This is a totally legitimate business, not at all a front for organized crime. So no need to worry about that as you're playing through the game. And the town of Fallbrook is run by a woman named Catherine Malin. Uh, you can see she has Malin's House of Hospitality, though hospitality, of course, is not guaranteed. Uh, the build you're looking at is a work in progress development build. So this is close to what the dev team is currently working on at Obsidian. Um, we're here in the town of Fallbrook trying to raise money for some quests we're on, and we're going to talk to Catherine and see if she has any jobs available for us. Catherine's great, ain't she? She'll pull you out of the sulfur, so long as you don't mind being in her debt. Come for vice or virtue, because we only sell one here. I do have a delicate matter what needs attending, since you asked. But how am I to know whether you're reliable, if not fully trustworthy? So one of the things at Obsidian that we really care about is player choice and reactivity and basically giving you the tools as a player to play the game the way you want to. In this case, we built our character where we need to get Catherine to work with us. We don't have enough skill to intimidate her, but we're a charming bastard, so we can use that to get her on our side. Against my better judgment, I do believe you. There's a Borst factory on up the way, run by a man who calls himself the King. Clive Lundberg, insufferable prick. That aside, it's a business ripe for the plucking. I want it. Clear as that. Stars, I hope so. Clive Lundberg, the self-proclaimed Borst King of Monarch, is swimming in profit and drowning in his ego. He's making the only meal to be had this side of Monarch, and I'm tired of ponying up for my dinner. I want that Borst factory. Owner dead or alive. And you're the soon to be handsomely paid fucker who's gonna get it for me. If you got brass knockers, you can shoot your way through the front gate. If you don't fancy getting shot to shit, you can try asking Duncan for a disguise. Might be another way in. Assuming you're courageous enough to trek the sewers. Void if I know. Hit him where it hurts. In his gut or his production lines ought to make do. Sometimes the simplest solution is the sweetest. I don't give a wit about the method or the means. Just the end. It'll be more than good when you're finished. Maybe not for Clive, but for me and you, I'm sure. Okay, so Catherine's given us the basics of what we need to do. There's another business here on Monarch that's making a profit, and she's not getting her cut, and obviously that can't stand. So she needs us to go to the Borst factory and deal with the owner. And she's given us a new side quest. Now there's a woman who knows what she wants. I like her. And we're gonna go ahead and make that side quest the active quest now so we can track our progress. And we like to use uh, puns on some of our some famous sci-fi titles. So this is the Slaughterhouse Clive quest we're, uh, we're on now. Now, in order to reach uh, the Borst factory, we're going to have to travel through the Monarch Overlands, which is not a safe location by any means. And but luckily, we have a few of our companions with us. Um, what we're, we have here is Nyoka and Ellie, two of the possible companions you can recruit over the course of the game. Nyoka is kind of a big game hunter. Uh, she's a native of Monarch. And Ellie is a, a former surgeon turned pirate. So she's more looking for adventure these days and decided to join your crew. And we're going to show you a few of the weapons we have on this character and some of their capabilities. And at Obsidian, when we're looking at player choice, we're not just talking about what dialogue options you pick or what quests you take or how you resolve them. 
it's really about how you as a player customize your toolkit through skills and perks and equipment in order to play the game the way you want to play. And in this case, we've focused this character on building up our technology skills, things like engineering and science, which allow us to modify these weapons to do increased damage, greater range, and different damage types entirely. And through our science skill, we've tinkered with the level of the weapons, allowing them to be more powerful and more deadly over the course of the game. So here we've uh, left the town of Fallbrook, and now we're on the, the Monarch Wilderness, the Overlands, and give you a bit of background about Monarch itself. This was actually the first planet terraformed in the Halcyon colony. It's a moon that orbits uh, one of the main gas giants in the colony, which you can see in the sky there. Now, the original plan was that the terraforming process would wipe out the native plants and animals and replace them with Earth species. That didn't quite work out the way they planned. Uh, instead, the native species grew much bigger, much tougher, and a lot more vicious. And this caused the corporate board, which runs the Halcyon colony, to decide to abandon the planet and all the colonists who left behind. Except for one corporation, the Monarch Stellar's Industries, who stayed behind and claimed the planet as their own. Now we come across a bandit uh, blockade here on the road, and we're showing you one of the features of the game. This is our tactical time dilation system. This allow basically your character is suffering a from hibernation sickness because you've been traveling from Earth to this colony for about 70 years, and uh, it allows you basically to slow down time, the, your perception of time. It's brain damage, but it's a positive effect of brain damage. And what we just showed you was actually one of the our companion abilities. Nyoka has her machine gun attack that uh, basically can do a lot, of, a lot of damage against an enemy. For this character, we focused on our leadership skills. Uh, and the leadership skills are ones that actually make your companions stronger and more durable in combat. And because we focused on those abilities, we were able to unlock the, that companion attack that we just demonstrated for you. Now here is one of the, the native species of monarch that I was talking about. This is These are the mantisaurs. That's actually a manta queen we're showing you there. These are, again, before the ter terraforming process, they were a small insect-like race. Now they're huge, bigger than humans, incredibly territorial and aggressive and very tough. So we're going to avoid them and try not to uh, get them to attack. We probably wouldn't survive the encounter. And it looks like we're coming up on another uh, blockade here. And uh, looks like, yep, there's a few more marauders there uh, doing a blockade in the, uh, the street. Now, for this character, because we've invested points into our weapon skills, beyond just making our weapons more effective, we've also unlocked the ability to do location-based hits and effects, like being able to aim at an arm and maim somebody, or shoot them in the head and blind them if it doesn't kill them outright. And this allows us to start combat off by weakening our enemies if we're not killing them directly and allows us to do different effects based on the type of enemy. Like we can cripple an enemy who might be a melee attacker making them slower to run towards you and attack. So here, because we've been focusing on improving our companions through our leadership skills and raising up our weapon abilities, we've really been able to increase the power of our character and our party and we've been able to deal with this encounter quite handily. So we're coming up on the Borse factory here. This is where Catherine has sent us to deal with the, uh, the problem she's having. And we're gonna do a little bit of an overlook to show the uh, situation. This is the front gate. You can see it's fairly well guarded. This is uh, definitely gonna be a challenge for us if we were to go in and just fight directly. If we've been focusing primarily on combat skills, that would definitely be an option for us. But when we were talking with Catherine, she did mention the possibility of a back entrance. So we're gonna go take a look and see if we can find that. And we're gonna kind of avoid those canids. They're another native species that are fairly aggressive and we wanna avoid combat with them if possible. And every gamer knows the best things are hidden behind waterfalls, so we'll go looking for that. And what we've got here, this is the the sewer entrance that Catherine mentioned. Unfortunately, with that red glow indicates it's locked, and we're not going to be able to uh, lockpick our way to go into the uh, the sewer entrance because we're not, I haven't been focusing on that skill for this character. 
So we're going to have to go through the front gate. Now, again, we could go in guns blazing, but we have other tools at our disposal. On a previous quest, we gained a new item, a piece of prototype technology called the holographic shroud. This allows us to generate a holographic disguise around ourselves and our companions and allows us to enter restricted areas and appear to be one of the people who work in that area. So allows us to, rather than being attacked outright, be challenged and talk our way out of the situation. Ah, you must be a part of the new line shift. Don't tell me you lost your key card already. A lost card's worth two infractions, you know. I think I did hear something about that. All right, okay. So here we're able to talk our way past the guard. It allows us to bypass a very difficult combat encounter just using our conversation skills. And the holographic disguise uh, is generated around our, ourselves and our party. You can see that meter at the bottom of the screen. That's the, the integrity of the disguise. As you're moving, the hologram starts to degrade. But you can see it's uh, covering us and our companions as well are now disguised and look like they are part of the facility. So we just have to plan our route carefully and make sure we can reach our destination before the disguise degrades entirely. Okay, and we've managed to enter the Borst factory successfully here. And as you can see, the up ahead, there's another restricted area. That hologram on the door is kind of our visual cue that our disguise is going to activate automatically. And you just saw it activate there. So because we've entered a new restricted area, the disguise has managed to recover, which allows us to sneak our way past this uh, mechanical here. And we're able to make our way into the, uh, the factory without getting into combat, thanks to our, uh, our holographic shroud. Now, one of the things that we at Obsidian think makes the Outer Worlds a very special game is the, the dark humor and tone that uh, Tim Kaine and Leonard Boyarsky really bring to their projects. And what you're seeing here is one of the prime examples of that. These are the Sisty Pigs. So these are animals that have been engineered to produce delicious borst flavored tumors, bacon flavored tumors that when they grow ripe and juicy, fall off the pigs and can be collected and processed for various borst products, including borst pockets, borst and beans, and borst worst. And you haven't tried the worst until you've tried borst worst. Now that we have our uh, disguise on, we want to try and make our way through here without getting uh, found by any enemies. Our disguise has degraded, so we want to see if we can make our way through, but looks like... Yep, we got caught by this mechanical here. Error. Employee information not found. Identify yourself. And it's not often you can in intimidate a robot, so we're going to go ahead and pick that option. Error. This unit is not experiencing errors. Error. This unit is functioning correctly. There is no need for the intervention of mechanical engineers. Thank you for your cooperation. So even in this world, mechanicals don't like going to the doctor. So we were able to bluff our way past that, uh, that robot sentry, and now we're able to make our way th continue through the Borst factory. Now, we could keep going and rely on our, our disguise to get us through, but we're going to see what other options we can find in this area and do a little bit of exploring. Here we found the control room for the, the canning facility. This is where those uh, delicious bacon flavored tumors are processed into the various products you can find throughout the, uh, uh, the colony. So here it gives us a nice overlook. We can see that there's several guards, some more robot sentries and some workers down below. Uh, again, we could go in guns blazing, but that would be uh, quite a challenge to achieve. And if we've been focusing on our conversation skills, we could maybe talk our way through this, but We've been focusing more on our hacking ability, so we're gonna use this terminal, which are always great options for new hacking uh, potential, and see what happens here. So we activated that pink slip protocol, which has reprogrammed the mechanical sentries to now see 
all the guards and workers are enemies instead of friends. So they're now going to start attacking the uh, the guards and workers of the Borscht factory, which is a bad day at the office for them, but a great opportunity for us. Records indicate you have already been identified as non-standard personnel. State your purpose. So we've been seen by this mechanical, and again, with our disguise, we could try and talk our way through, but you know what? We've been focusing on some of our weapon skills. Let's just go ahead and attack outright and, and see what happens. Alert, intruder on the premises. Instituting correctional behavior protocols. So that's caused our disguise to, uh, to end, and... The weapon we're using is a heavy machine gun that's actually been modified using our engineering skill. It now does shock damage rather than the standard de weapon damage type of this weapon. And shock damage is very effective against mechanicals, so that's a great choice to use here. So this is something we weren't expecting. We've actually been able to be offered a flaw. This is a system we've talked about in the past where Based on the actions that you take during the game, you may be offered flaws that you can accept that give your character a penalty, but in result, you get the option of purchasing a new perk, which can give you a way to advance your character outside of the normal level up process. But here, we made our way through the factory and we're going to be talking to Clive Lumberg. This is the guy that Catherine sent us to deal with, the one who's not giving her her cut of the profits. So let's talk to Clive and see what he has to say. Whoa, now. And just what do you figure you're doing up here? These are my private quarters, friend. I don't allow tours up here. I don't allow tours ever on deeper consideration. Certain things require a mess to do well. See, I was just killing some time. I prefer to prepare my dinner by my own hand. Nothing like Fresh and bloody, borst worst. Clive seems totally sane to me. I don't know why Catherine has a problem with him. I do own a factory known for specializing in the canning of borst worst. On occasion, I like to imbibe other parts of the sisty pig. Did you fancy me a cannibal? Perish the thought. No, I don't eat the bodies, I disappear. A joke that last was. So, what can I do for you? My full attention is at your disposal. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't vex this guy, but if you do, it's been nice knowing you. While I approve of your associate's cautious nature, I still teeter on the verge of losing my patience. Let us move forward with the present proceedings. So at this point, we could choose to honor our deal with Catherine and just attack Clive outright. But even this far into the quest, we're not locked into any one approach. We can still talk to him and see what options he has. Do not. That greedy star-crossed sow. Listen, friend. The Borst King of Monarch does not negotiate with coveters. How about you bring me Catherine's severed head and I will gift you a lifetime supply of Borst. Now this is a pretty great deal. I mean, Catherine's offering us money, which is always useful, but this is a lifetime supply of delicious bacon-flavored tumors. How could you possibly pass that up? Now, at this point, we're going to end our presentation. When the game releases in October of this year, you can make a choice of how you want this quest to play out, and you can see the consequences of your actions and how those choices are driving the story forward. This is Halcyon, the furthest colony in the galaxy, proudly owned and operated by corporations. But a stranger has just arrived. Someone who could be a villain, a hero, or a psychopath. The colony will never be the same. 